Welcome to Cat's Cadenza, the place for alternative rock bands. We have a very special guest in studio. We have Corey Harper right, and Tony Oni in studio, award-winning saxophonist, composer, and educator Alex On. So, according to your Twitter, you like guacamole and hate the dentist. Can you tell us more about that? Now, here's your host, Katherine Barner. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Cats Cadenza. I'm your host, Katherine Barner. And if you're new here, I bring awesome interviews with musicians such as Milky Chance all the way to small indie artists that I think you need to know about. And today I'm at the Knitting Factory in Spokane, Washington with Monster Watch. How are you guys doing? Good. Great. Good? I'm we talked good. six months ago. Yeah. Um, it's uh, been a minute. It's <laughs> been a minute. Isn't that crazy? And I saw you guys coming through town and I was like, oh, I have to talk to them because of who you're touring with. Yeah. The distillers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, how exciting is that for you guys? It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, something we never thought would happen, so. <laughs> well, how did you end up becoming the support artist for them? Uh, I don't really know. I just got an email from their manager one day asking if they wanted to, or if we wanted to play two shows with them, and I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you thought it was something from Tree Fort, right? Yeah, was, I think it's like a mixture of things. I'm just not really 100% sure how they found out about us, but mm-hmm. it's really cool. <laughs> and this is the second stop you guys are on with them, and you played last night down in Boise, correct? Yeah. How was that? It was really fun. We haven't played a venue that big before, so... Yeah. How, how did that, like, you feel change your performance at all? Yeah. Uh, a lot more room to move around and freak out, so... <laughs> I was going to also ask you about that, because post Tree Fort, after I saw you guys play at Pre-Funk... And then, in other photos you guys post on social media, I see that you like to crowd surf a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us about why you like to crowd surf? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just fun. I think it really helps with the energy of our set. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I don't know. It just gets the crowd involved as opposed to having this like barrier between yeah. the crowd and the the band. You know, makes it a little more inclusive. Mm-hmm. Have you ever gotten injured doing that? Uh, not really. I've just, like. Got a couple cuts on my shins before, but mm-hmm. like last night I, f- I like fell off the barrier when I was trying to climb over it. Oh no! But <laughs> I, I pulled it off. Pulled it off. Yeah. <laughs> Does it do the larger venues make it harder to do that, or you think it's? It makes more me want to do it more. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. What about you guys? Do you guys ever do anything more wild like John does? Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I just play hard and try to like get up sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like if I have a pause, I'll like do something weird. Like yeah. Jump around. Sometimes I feel like we just gotta hold it down. You know, keep it going while he just does his thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, John's gone. Let's, uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, half, yeah, half the time I'll look and he'll be gone. Like, Alright, it's you and me, bud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have so to wait until he gets contact. back up on stage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah um, it loosens people up a bit. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and then, uh, do you guys have any new new music you guys are working on right now? Uh, yeah, we've got a couple of things in the works. Uh, can't really say too many details, but we'll, we're going to be putting out a couple songs next year. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Because you guys have been touring a lot, it seems like. Yeah, I haven't had re- much time, really, to <laughs> focus on that, which is a good thing. It's Did not because we're lazy, it's... Because you're busy. Yeah. Yeah. So, does touring ever get just absolutely exhausting? Because I saw on your Instagram story before I came in here that you guys were just like taking naps in the green room. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been a minute since we've had long drives. So, like today we had to get up at six in the morning to get here on time. So, we were all just kind of like beat because mm-hmm. the show didn't get over until like eleven, and we went to bed at like what two. Yeah. Oh my it's really just the driving. I think that's that's the only hard part about exhausting. Touring. Yeah. yeah. Once we get to the venue, we're just like, all right, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. And I see in November, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, you're playing in Mexico City, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you driving all the way down there? No. (laughs) No, we're flying. You're flying? Yeah. Have you ever flown with all your gear before? No, we're uh, we're not taking too much stuff, but I bought that so I could fly with it. It's my guitar. (laughs) But yeah, I'm just taking like that, his guitar, and then using some other stuff that's down there. Yeah. So What's the, the band Carrying Kids? Remember them from Tree Fort? Did you, did you get what, to see them? What was their name again? Carrying Kids. 
Oh uh, yeah, I heard of them. I didn't. I don't think I got the chance to see them though. Mm. They played the same stage we did like later on. Okay. Mm. But we did like two or three shows of them last year, like on the way to Tree Fort. Mm-hmm. And then they asked us a couple months ago because they throw this festival down there. Oh, that's really cool. So. Be yeah. able to use their gear. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they have their own label, right? Yeah, yeah. it's like a little independent label. Mm-hmm. Mm. But. And do you guys come to Spokane that often? No, this is our second time here, so it's cool to have our second show be at the Knitting Factory. <laughs> yeah. Where was your first show at? Uh, it was at the Observatory before it got uh, changed ownership or whatever. Okay. But, yeah. Cool. Is there anything else you guys want to say? Want to plug? Where can people find your music? Uh, everywhere, except Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Spotify and Apple Music and all that stuff, so. Mm-hmm. Our buddy takes a lot of cool VHS videos, too, so there's live stuff on YouTube. Oh, cool. Mm. Why VHS? He's just into it. Just into it? That's he's, cool. He's a hipster. Yeah, Trevor Crump. Give him a shout out. Yeah. yeah. And where can people find you guys on social media? Uh, all the platforms, it's just Monster Watch. The at symbol monster watch. Cool, cool. Well, Mm -hmm. thank you guys for sitting down with me and catching up six months later after Tree Fort. Yeah, 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 it's good to see you. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure to go down below and click that like button. I've also linked the video for the past interview we did where we talked a little bit about their music influences and why they like bands like Tame and Paula who are outside their genre. So make sure to go down and watch that, and thanks for watching. Thank you.